Time to press ahead. It's like seems like a good moment to talk. Your path leads away from me, I sense. Be safe. Perhaps one day you will see the fruits that your victory has sown here. Helm's blessings upon you. Why, yes. Once Alfir is done with this song, we will be looking for patrons. All coppers welcome, pal. Alfir is writing us a song. A stupid song won't bring Mole back. Tell her, won't you? You're here. Good. That's good. Me? Oh, I'm fine. I'm just worried about the kids. Maul is still missing, and they haven't taken it too well. I've been trying to cheer them up. We're writing a song together. But I think they're just humoring me. Maybe. I'd love to put on a show just for them. But it's boring if I'm the only one playing. I need another bard. Maybe I'll find one in the city. Until then, the kids and I shall work on our masterpiece. It's taking all so long. The way is clear. The light has shown the way. Good. The sooner we get out of here, the better. There you are. I was wondering where the devil you'd been. Who? Oh, right. Well, forget about that, McGungus. We have more important things to worry about. Like Walbrin. Oh, forget about that. Walbrin and the Iron Hand Gnomes are planning something dreadful in the city. They have room powder, they have motive. We have to stop them. Because they're a gaggle of vindictive crybabies with no sense of propriety. That is to say, they gabbed about their plans like a geese, and I overheard them. Like a very devious goose. <laughs> with the sword of justice in one hand and the shield of self-righteousness in the other, we most certainly will. To saving the city. And my fool of a friend. I owe you an apology. Barkas and I are, are another matter. I'm dealing with you right now. I saw you as a means to escape, nothing more. But when the sky lit up, when I followed it here, I knew you were behind it. I apologize for not seeing your true worth and for being, quite frankly, rude. In last light. <laughs> Tough, but fair. And that's precisely why I want you by my side in Baldur's Gate. The Iron Hand Gnomes are going to save the city. And you can be part of it. The plan is what it's always been. To bring the work and innovations of the Iron Hand Gnomes to every corner of the realm. Problem is, Baldur's Gate is sick. Once the pinnacle of greatness, it's eating itself alive to save itself from starving. Find me in the city. And once you see what it's become, 
you'll know that I, and I alone, can stop it. I'll be seeing you at your camp. Why did I leave that damn... Moonrise has been cleansed. Baldur's Gate is next. We will save Baldur's Gate. I know it. Better be. It hasn't been that long. We need to get back to the city before those monsters do. Baldur's Gate is my home. I have to protect it. We leave the heart of the Absolute alive. Thanks to you. You did well to defeat Ketherick. But Ketherick was only the first to fall. There are many more battles ahead, and they will not be so easily won. You will need allies. You have the makings of a leader. Your actions have already inspired those around you. Jahira's wisdom will be an asset to you on the journey ahead. Her harpers, too. Halsin's strength and loyalty will bolster you in times of need. But if we are to succeed, we will need others. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Baldur's Gate may not know it yet, but its fate is bound to ours. Seek on its streets those whose purpose aligns with our own, and invite them to our cause. Together, we will put an end to the Absolute, the Chosen, all. The road to Baldur's Gate is west of the town. If we hurry, we'll arrive before the Absolute's forces. to Baldur's Gate is up ahead. No turning back once we start down that road. The Shadow Curse will soon be forgotten, thanks to us. Looks like an army marched through here. here and my father i heard what happened what he'd become by killing him you set him free you set alien free and me a great deal but still some of the details elude me catherick thorn is was 
My father. He raised me to serve Saluna as my mother, rest her soul, had wished. He was everything to me, all my life. When an emissary of Saluna came to our little town, we were elated. Dame Aelin, daughter of the Moon Maiden herself. Tell me, do you believe in love at first sight? You sound like my father. But it was more than that. This was no mere attraction. It was love. Lucky for me, she felt the same way. But my father was skeptical. Aelin is immortal, after all. I understand it's strange. There's an imbalance between us, certainly. But I suppose loving Aelin felt the same as loving myself. It was natural. Then... And this is where I still need answers. I died. I'm not sure how or why, but all was black, black, black. Next I knew I was being jolted awake. I smelled musty air, I saw shadows. And then my father's face. So changed. So hideously warped. You jest. Yet, he did seem a ghost to me. A, a shadow of the father I loved. He resurrected me with magic so foul, I nearly wretched just thinking of it. I didn't know that then, but I could see the change in him. He told me we'd be together now, said that Aelin was dead. I couldn't speak, could only run. I found last light within the shadows, made a shelter there, prayed my father wouldn't find me. By the time Jahira came, I'd pieced together just enough to know I'd been dead a hundred years. That my father was the source of the horrors plaguing this land, my home. I couldn't tell her who I was. I had to protect them, and myself, no matter what. It's all out in the open now, and with my father dead, I have nothing to fear. Except for Aelin. She needs healing, rest. I'm grateful for your help, your friendship. I hope we won't intrude on your hospitality too long, but I'm grateful for a safe place to, well, just to be. What do you know about me? You spoke of my past, being chased by wolves. I told no one about that. Almost no one. But I certainly didn't share that with you. There is nothing I can tell you that you do not already know yourself. They trained you well, trained you hard. Chiseled away any part of you that did not fit their plan. They made you forget. I chose to do that. For the mission to protect Shah's... Secrets. Yes, yes, that is an old song, girl. Your goddess cares more for her precious secrets than she does her devotees. Get to the point! When you freed me, you severed a bond between me and that dog, Thorm. A bond of pain. His, inflicted on me. When I laid eyes on you, I sensed a similar bond. You, tethered to two others. Someplace distant. Let me help you remember. You feel Shadowheart's mind tug at the edges of your own. You know this sensation. She wants you to see whatever is about to be revealed. Your mind joins with Shadowheart's. Something pulls at you both, bringing you elsewhere.
something sparks in your memory. Teachings about Salunite rites of passage, about how they would abandon their children out in the wilds and force them to find their way home. It seems that one child never came back. She was taken. What? Who was that man? You already know. Did you not see yourself in him? Do you not recognize your own blood? My father. That was him. That is him. He lives still. And your mother, too. No. It can't be. I'm an orphan. And who told you that? Your adoptive family? You are not to blame. You were young. Impressionable. They took you because they wanted to break and remake you. But you are a child no longer. You are a woman. One who knows what must be done. My parents... I need to save them. Your parents are with your abductors. You will need to return to their lair. But be warned. You may have once thought of them as comrades, mentors, friends, even lovers. They will all be enemies now. You have been forewarned for what is to come. But not yet forearmed. The spear. How do you have it? I threw it into the Shadowfell. Shar is quick to discard whatever she has no use for. I think you know that well enough. But I felt it call to me as I took flight. Whatever Shah calls her own, Saluna has equal claim to. They are one and the same. Their power is matched and mirrored. Take it. You will find it useful. What you do with it, that will be up to you. Same as before. I'll need every advantage, it seems. Thank you. A debt repaid. You returned my life unto me. Now go and claim your own. It hurts. Shah torments you still. What a spiteful creature she is. This will not stop until you take action. See that your parents' sacrifices are not in vain. Allow the Moon Maiden to guide you at last. feel a change in the air, like the curse itself knows its time is short. Just what I need. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm glad to have some company on this journey. Taken from the light to be raised in darkness. Your truth is finally dawning, Shadowheart. You can follow its light, or you can retreat back into dusk. The truth is finally dawning. Shadowheart can follow its light, or she can retreat back into dusk. Worms Rock Fortress. All travelers to Baldur's Gate flow through it. It serves as headquarters for the Flaming Fist and their commander, my father. The Absolute's armies on the march. Gods forbid a tadpole Grand Duke throw open the gates for them. Orin, I'd never heard tell of, but Gortash I know, or know of more precisely, a self-styled strategic advisor to Baldur's Gate's peers. A bit player with dreams of a leading role, the way father told it. He had no use for Gortash, and even less for his advice. I don't remember much beyond that. 
But where these chosen are concerned, I have a suspicion we're about to know more than we'd like. Yes, but first, a question. If your home were under siege, what would you sacrifice to save it? As would I, and more. I was 17. Father, older Raven Guard, had just been named a Grand Duke and was called away to Elturel to help settle a dispute. That's when the Cult of the Dragon made its move. The Cult of the Dragon, a fractured religion. Some believers hold that undead dragons will inherit the world. Others worship the dragon goddess Tiamat and intend to summon her to Faerun. A ten day after father left, I heard a whisper as I slept. Dusk Hawk Hill, the queen of chaos awakens. Go alone. I grabbed a rapier and set out. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, yet not a single star was shining. There they were, gathered at the foot of the hill. Your head tingles. Will wants to show you what happened. In the looming shadow of the mount, five groups of five figures each encircle a lofty totem. Atop each totem, a dragon's head is carved, and a massive orb held in its mouth. The cultists chant, first softly, then crying to the starless sky. There is a crack of thunder, a gust of wind, and a dragon's white head appears in the storm. As the maelstrom howls, Mizora's lips press to your ear. She will destroy Baldur's Gate. Grant me your soul and I will give you the power to save it, she whispers. She read the terms while two devils stood witness. And I said yes. One soul for one city. I don't know that it was brave. I just know that it was right. The moment I agreed, I burned with the fires of Avernus and oozed the rot of Dis. The cultists choked on our poisons and burned from our flames. And when we were done, all that remained were five grayed orbs atop a pile of ash. My soul was bound, and my lips were sealed. She didn't. She came on order of her mistress, Zariel. Tiamat made a play for power. Zariel had other plans. That was the most Mazora's ever said. All that mattered was that she got her prize. Another pet added to her warlock menagerie. I don't know that it was brave. I just know that it was right. It is the one scar I ever bore of it. Mizora replaced it with a sending stone. She uses it to track my location and speak from a distance. I could flee to the spine of the world or the depths of the lower dark and still never shake her. He returned to an unsuspecting city and a wayward son with a smirking devil at his side. I tried to tell him the truth, but my mouth couldn't form the words. I'd led him to the battlefield, but Mazora had swept it clean. I showed him my stone eye, but he only turned away. After, he said only one word, go. So I did. I understand. No, never. He did the only thing he could. In his eyes, I invited a devil into our midst. I was a fool at best, a traitor at worst, and Grand Duke Ravenguard suffers neither. More than you know, 
The better question is, did he ever miss me? If he did, he missed the Will Ravenguard he once knew, not the hell-touched warlock he returned to. Poor Shadowheart. She's been jerked around so much. I want to believe the gods keep this world balanced, but sometimes... Sometimes I wonder. You saw the extent of Flo's friendship. She'll lend you a hand, long as she can crush your spirit while she's at it. I knew never to let my guard down around her. She always made me laugh, even when I least wanted to. If she'd been completely different from who she was, we might have been real friends. Nothing worth reading. Cambian manipulation at its most obvious. I guess she did. Much as it makes me want to puke to admit it. Ugh, devils, you know. Fucking devils. They really screw with you, don't they? Shadowheart was no true child of Shah, merely a captive. She must have her vengeance. So, it's a quest to free Shadowheart's parents, is it? And here I was, worried I'd be the only one with a difficult family reunion waiting in the city. The thing that will decide my fate forevermore. Yes, it's been on my mind. Why? Well, of course I've thought about it. If I completed the ritual instead of Cazador, I'd get all that power. And I could walk in the sun without fear I'd turn into a mind flare. Of course, I don't even know if I could complete the ritual. It may be impossible, but it certainly is tempting. Before anything else, I need to know where it's happening. Uh, to the public, Cazador is an ordinary noble. A little reclusive, perhaps, but just another of the great and the good of Baldur's Gate. He has a grand palace on the hills of the gate, where he hosts the city's high society. I don't know if he performed the ritual there. It feels too public. It risks exposure. I know. Subtle, isn't it? Mephistopheles is one of the lords of the Nine Hells. Raphael is not going to let any ire be tracked back to him. Perhaps Raphael even will gain from setting us on this course, who can say? All I know is I need to unravel the secrets around Cazador's ritual. And I can only do that in Baldur's Gate. to my whole life and I was gullible enough to just believe it my parents are alive and I have to save them I think a part of me always knew that a part that Shah denied to me not if you enjoy having your head attached to your neck she stole my family from me. She stole my life. Whatever reason she has isn't good enough. We'd better press on for now and hope we're ready when the moment comes. But before that, 
There's one thing I need to see to. You'll see for yourself soon enough. Just leave it with me. There you are. I have awaited your arrival with great anticipation. Come closer. Feel my voice rattle your bones as I proclaim our victory. Moon Maiden Saluna, hear me. Ketherick Thorm, traitor, apostle of Merkel, is dead at last. My mate, Most High. Darling Isabel is safe and well. Safe and well and return to my embrace. Blessings upon the Slayer of the Wicked One. We are a powerful party indeed. Faerun itself trembles at our touch. My darling Isabel says we will stay allied at your side. I am pleased to hear it. I am free from my bonds, but not my duty. The dead three are risen. The dead two remain. You must face them. I will help. Looking forward to a bit of rest, if I'm honest. It's been a long century. The curse has been lifted, the lands cleansed of the shadows. Catherick's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this at least, you have triumphed. Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Worm's Rock is secure. The preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the flaming fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. Patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping. Yes, sir. No, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Your plan is falling apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. Control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expected the prison bearers to kill Ketherick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. I itch to be with you. Split your skin to see your skull shine in the light, little tyrant. 
Lucky for you, I harvested a whole family of living flesh in Rivington at High Sun. They will sate my blade thirst tonight. Oh, but tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, my blades will thirst again. Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away. I need a moment for the two of us. I was supposed to sacrifice myself to stop the absolute. Yeah, I don't think I could have gone through with it in truth. And I'm glad that I didn't, given what has come to light. Indeed. Under other circumstances, I might have been subdued or ashamed. But after what we saw, I must admit, I'm excited. The Elder Brain. More importantly, the crown that it wore. Even without seeing it for myself, I could sense it. Netherese magic. So pure, so complete. I doubted what I was feeling at first. Most Netherese artifacts contain only the faintest amount of their former power. The ghost of an echo of a memory. That crown was different. I can't fathom how such a wonder survived. Surely everything of its ilk was destroyed along with Netheril itself, but no matter, it exists. I must learn more of it. That crown sits on our gargantuan elder brain bent on destroying us and everything we hold dear. Understanding its true nature, might unlock the means of our victory. We need to learn more about what we saw. An artifact as powerful as that crown must have been documented somewhere. As luck would have it, we'll soon find ourselves near one of the finest book collections this side of Candlekeep, Sorcerer's Sundries. I need to go there and learn all I can. The only kind I have? Sorcerer's Sundries is no mere trading post. It's been serving the arcane community for centuries. 
Their collection of rare tomes is unparalleled. <laughs> Nethery sex are hardly commonplace, but I'm certain they'll have one or two stashed away. You'll have to forgive my eagerness, but if my suspicions prove to hold water, this could be the answer to all our problems. Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? Hey, soldier. He got his claws into me early. I was a wild kid, brawling my way through the city. One of my mates got wind of a bit of work, guarding some indoorsy type with lots of enemies. Seemed like easy money, so I went in for it. He took one look at me and said I was perfect. I like that. Not like that, you know. Just... It felt like a good fit. I kept him safe, and he paid me well. Well enough to move my folks into a better neighborhood and put something away for the future. My future. I respected him, trusted him. And he returned that trust, that respect. His life was in my hands, and I took that seriously. The whole thing with Zauriel happened so fast. I had no idea what had gone down until it was over. One minute I was in Baldur's Gate, a happy, healthy, not quite kid. The next, I was burning up in Avernus with an engine for a heart. Zariel laughed, said she paid him well for my services. She'd wanted to test her new machine, and he said I'd be able to handle it. He was right. Sometimes I wish he weren't. Evil, evil bastard. The events of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of mind flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the astral prism and the mysterious visitor inside of it. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the dead three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. Will you liberate them from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? Right now, your resolve feels firm. 
but there is no knowing how you will feel when the moment comes. You will not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you. I need your help.
Is it watching me? Let's go. Close ranks. Not over. Come to the skull.
Look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the absolute. Of all the things to be indebted to, a bloody mind flayer. You may call me the Emperor. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate. Though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance, I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of mind slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. the absolute I was a thrall like any other but I was fortunate I broke free and started a new life in my old city I sustained myself on criminals unglamorous but there are plenty of them rarely missed and they fueled me when I did my work I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stelmay we formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield. The largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence, though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while, until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Indeed, his hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. But to enslave an elder brain, a questionable decision. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall with you. Rather them than potential future allies, like you. Prince Orpheus, son of the first leader of the Githyanki. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus' mother to bring about the fall of the Elithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' mother left, a usurper took her place. Vlacheth declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Vlacheth wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never was. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. 
Blackith was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. A very good question. One that I have been unable to answer. That Orpheus lives at all is ruinous to Blackith. She has done everything in her power to keep his existence a secret. That Gortash and the Chosen found out about it. This is impossible to explain. But it was important enough to them that Gortash sent me to retrieve it. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside and found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, he would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid, a sworn enemy, just like me. You are already more a lithid than you realize. It has improved you. You seek to reverse an inevitable process, a process of evolution. When I first escaped from the Elder Brain, I too railed against the change. But the longer I have inhabited this form, the more it has grown on me. Even if my original body remained intact after I transformed, I would not return to it. Doing so would only impose limitations. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent lithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. The answer is twofold. One, I can, but it would kill you, as I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well with the limited form you have, but you would do far better as an illithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? Even as you say the words, you feel a lurch of disappointment. Your mind bristles with a lithid potential. How could you be so cruel as to deny yourself what you want most in the world? I felt that. It's your nature. You cannot fight it. So embrace it. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. You 
absolute horror. Do you know how hard it was to find that? To cultivate it to be safe for communion? Waste. Utter waste. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control. To make camp soon. Might be a while before there's another chance to rest. <sighs> Already feeling better. So. There's been a mind flayer inside the artifact, or astral prism, the whole time we've had it. it. Sounds like utter madness, even though I've seen it with my own eyes. The more I learn, the less I understand just why I was sent to retrieve that thing. But it matters little now. I do not serve Shah anymore, nor the Mother Superior. The prism is no longer my mission. Saving my parents is. But I digress. Did you want something? Fine. What's on your mind? How are you holding up? Don't be so modest. I can't remember the last time I met someone like you. Perhaps I never did and never will again. <laughs> <laughs> 